and drive you to the res. Episode again. two. Drive into the res again. 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 Guess we do that all the time. Today we're driving to the res so we can go to the boat so we can get it ready to go halibut fishing. Okay. And um, we have um, some meetings today at two, so we want to be there by two. So we got up extra early so we can make it there by two o'clock. <laughs> right now we only got a half hour to spare. So. So that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today anyway was, you know, if you have things to do on your to-do list, like, I need to get this thing done, but you find yourself with a whole bunch of things before that that seem to interfere with the thing that's on your mind to get done with. So that brings about sometimes this feeling of, like, you haven't got anything done, even though you did 25 things. But the one thing that somehow has gained its importance in your mind is this is the one that needs to be done. Now it's not the one that got done. I wonder why is that? Plus also it adds a level of stress to your body and your thoughts and your mind's emotions. Because you know it's important and you just can't get it done. Right. I can't get it done. I have this project in my mind I need to get done, which is uh, there are some holes in the fish hole on the halibut boat that lets water in when we're fishing, and it doesn't sink the boat or anything because it's going to the tank, the fish hole tank, but it melts the ice and it makes it really wet for the guy who's trying to ice the fish. It really needs fixed for two years now. Well, not for two years. We only had it for a year, so for a year, and um, fixing it is just many simple ways of going about it. But actually getting to the boat with the piece of the parts to do it means I have to make sure uh, 500 things are done in front of that, including getting out of bed, <laughs> making breakfast, feeding the chickens, feeding the dogs, buying a puppy, <laughs> checking my Facebook, dealing with messages, watching a video that came to be. Today I have found this boy called Soul Eye. Never heard of Soul Eye, have you? Is that the singer boy? Yeah, he's a rap singer boy. And I don't listen to much rap. Actually, I don't listen to any rap. Well, I did listen to quite a lot of rap. It wasn't by choice, though, because my crew were um, particularly fond of rap music when we go along like it for Black Cod and, and whatnot. And they would be outside working really hard, doing this monotonous work. And um, for some reason, Snoop Doggy Doggy and Tupac and those kind of guys were, they were the guys that you want to listen to when you're baiting a hook. <laughs> Not me, because I just, I really never really got into that music. They loved it. So, uh, I listened to a lot of rap. And I found that it's, you know, generally a bit degrading. <laughs> I guess it's horrible, it's, usually. <laughs> I'm sure there's the probably worst, some that's not, but ever. all the ones I ever heard, yeah. yeah they were really incredibly bad. degrading, low frequency, negative. Yeah. Uh, it was just like repulsive to me. So uh, I ended up having to trade the guys a few songs of their songs and then one song of my song. And I mean, they hated my songs worse than I hated their songs, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> because, uh, you know, high frequency music, chance. Mantras, things like that. It's just not. It doesn't sync up with with with, with Tupac rap. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, this Soul Eye boy. Uh, he was a rap fan. He really liked rap, but he didn't like the lyrics either. But he did like singing them. So, oh well, look, there's an elk. There's oh, tons of elks. It's always an elk. It's full of elks. Right. Uh, yeah. So he uh, wanted to sing high frequency rap, which is not a totally unique thing or anything. I mean, there's people that do that, but he really made it his thing. He went to, uh, I think he grew up in Milwaukee or Minnesota or one of those eastern, kind of northeastern places. And uh, he had a few, you know, push pulls in his life as are want to happen. He might have gotten the message sooner. Maybe didn't have to get the way he got the message, but the message came the way it came. And he heard the call and felt the push. So in his case, he ended up Mount Shasta, started studying consciousness, and expansion and ascension and things like that. And he continued his music and now he's uh, an ascension rap 
a singer, I guess. <laughs> yes, the only words I remember is always in the tension thinking of ascension. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's one of his raps. <laughs> and uh, while he was attending his meditation retreat type event, he met the love of his life. Yeah, he did. And that, that happens to be Alanis Morissette. I got married and I have babies. And uh, he has a nice Facebook page I was looking at today. And his Facebook page, uh, he's beatboxing to one of his sons. And he has birthday pictures of him and his daughter. And it's it's a bit, it's intimate. It's kind of like there's like maybe a couple thousand, 1,500. Nothing like 10 million followers or anything. And it's a, an intimate connection to some degree. And Alanis Morissette obviously is a megastar with hundreds of thousands of followers on her webpage or millions or whatever. She just a bit, just released a, well anyway. See oh, how boy. we get distracted? <laughs> See how we get distracted from fixing boats? So I'm trying to fix this hole in the boat and now I'm looking <laughs> at Solai who's married to Lannis Morissette who uh, I've always been a fan of from the day one I've heard her music 1990s or you know whenever she started. She's been on an interesting path also. So from Solai boy followed and looked at his music and you know I tried to listen to his rap and I'm sure if you're a rap fan it has pretty good beat to it the lyrics are pretty cool it's still not my style <laughs> <laughs> not my we'll style listen to a little uh, bit, listen to a bit. Yeah. then I, I found that uh, I found that the attraction of my attention then went to Alanis Morissette what is she doing and uh she has a podcast. She has a brand new album came out three days ago. And she has a podcast. And she has a podcast called Talking with you know, yeah. Alanis Morissette, something like that. It's like... Yeah. And the uh, conversation in the podcast are quite cool, actually. Very cool. One of them was with Byron Katie. And uh, one I was just listening to start with was Gabor, Gabor Mate, who uh, is a pretty interesting fellow. So there's quite a few addiction things. And I think that's one of the things she's dealing with addiction issues because she has food issues, food addiction issues that she's processed or been working on. At any rate, you see, you don't get much of what work done. <laughs> it's more of these things and I thought if you needed, now you did a, a podcast with Alanis Morissette. That's where it led me to. Yeah, it was really good. I liked it. It was very good. I was... What, what did I start my day with? Yeah, you had uh, three courses you needed to unpack to get ready for Ibenz Academy. Yep. And that was the most important thing to handle. First that's of all, the overhang overhanging hand. First of all, we slept in. Which we didn't means... sleep in, we got up early. No, we got up at after nine. 10. No, we got up at 9. Was it? Yeah, it was oh, nine. I think we, we got up early. 10. We felt late. We have seven or eight, nine, ten roosters to help us wake up in the morning. They did their mighty, mighty mess that got us out of bed at night. So why do we have so many roosters? To get us out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we didn't have any roosters, so we pulled into the universe to give us a rooster. Two roosters. They arrived very quickly from a neighbor saying, Larry... Oh, you want roosters? Yeah, oh, we, didn't, we hadn't said it to anybody, but nope. the, the universe responded very quickly. Give us two roosters, and then one of our girls went broody. One of the hens went broody, and she had lots of little chicks, and half of them were roosters, which is apparently normal. Normally, in a, in the social scheme of things, in the factories they kill all the boys. It's a horrible thing. And in the farms, they eat them. They eat the boys because they eat a lot of food. They fight. They mess up the girls. And they don't produce any eggs, right? So what else is there for them to do? In the wild, in, in their the natural wild, habitat, they're they, the, the sacrifice. Yeah, they sacrifice themselves, get the, the predators out of the way so that the girls survive. But yeah, um, so we ended up with two. Then another person dropped two off because he said he didn't want to eat them. They were pets and he just... They were his wanted, daughter's pets. Were they? Yeah, the daughter's pets. She was like four and he couldn't do it. So we ended up with four. And then, well... Then one showed up on the road, then another Two. One. Two have showed up on the road because people drive by, see a lot of chickens. They want to get rid of the rooster. And a word has gotten around that we don't kill the roosters. So now we have like 10 roosters because people keep dropping them off. And plus the chick ones grew up now. And anyways... Now we, we have, have a rooster sanctuary. Yes, now we have a 
rooster sanctuary so if you're listening and you can give a rooster a good home let us know we will drive and we will deliver your rooster you can come and pick him up <laughs> <laughs> we need homes for roosters we have so many of them they don't fight each other some of them are really friendly for humans yeah some of them are um, super friendly but some of them are very good guardians so yeah, if you need a guardian for your yard yeah. if you have too many bugs for example yeah we will eat all your bugs so that's why we have so many roosters. How did we get to roosters? I thought we were talking about unpacking, of course. Yeah, so anyways, the roosters did not wake me up this morning. I slept in um, and didn't get up. I like to get up early and do some work before Larry gets up and I wasn't able to. Um, and then I had to deal with some personal stuff, make phone calls and all sorts of things dealing with that. Well, the puppy came up. I think that... Oh. The puppy. Do you want to hear about the puppy? Yeah, I do want to hear about the puppy, you know? Okay. We I love mean, puppies. We need to unpack this course and a puppy got in the way. Yes. Did you see that red So, buoy? about... What? There was a red buoy over there. I don't see a red buoy. We were driving by the water. I see a big giant ship and I thought I saw a red buoy. Yeah, I don't see one. I guess it's gone now. Alright. So, Guys, if you see red, especially if you're an ocean boy, if you see red, it could be a life raft, it could be... Oh, you, you have to see watch. The, you have to like... Yeah. Well, Zoom in, make sure everybody's fine. Yep, everybody's fine. So anyways, um, for a couple of months now, well, last year, was it, was it one year ago, more or less? More or less. Uh, my dog Fiona passed away, and um, she... She, didn't she, never, she lived in California. She lived dog. in California. She came up here, visited um, my dog, Missy, learned how to drink out of the toilet, which is another story. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she passed away. She was a mixed lab and um, golden, retriever. golden retriever. And I'm allergic to dogs, so I had to wash her regularly, brush her, uh, wipe her down with hypoallergenic wipes for dogs. And it was a, it was a handful. But she was with me all the time. She was adorable. She kind of had the same digestion issues that Brad had. Yes. Old Brad. Yeah. I think she Delicate was vaccination system. damaged as well. And she died of the all the tumors that vaccine the, the vaccine gives them. The rabies vaccine gives them. It's well known. You can Google that. Dogs uh, tumors from vaccine. She died of those. And um, but she was like what 10, 20. 12 or something. Uh, she was 6 or 7 or 8 maybe. Uh, she was oh yeah, yeah. She was about 9 or 8. So, um, she lived with my son in California and um, and then she said, yeah, I'm going to come back. Watch out for me. I says, well, you know, you need to come back as a hypoallergenic dog, right? And then she heard that Missy, or our other dog, she's doing great. Our Missy's doing great. Really great. Loves that, her front porch. Yeah, she had decided, told us already that when she comes back, she wants to be a lap dog, a little thing, so that she can travel with us. Has a special name. Lap. Remember the name of it? Bichon Fish. Or yeah, something like that. a Bichon or something like that. Bichon Fish, something like that. Yeah. So. Um, she wants to ride in a truck she on my to, lap yes. with her head out the window, and yeah. she can't do that in a giant body. Exactly. So when Fiona heard about this, she said, oh, I want a little body too, so mommy can carry me everywhere. She said, well, I like that idea. I've always wanted a little dog. And um, just so you know, we have three dogs and they're all big. And two cats and 20 chickens. <laughs> and two cats and 20 chickens. <laughs> so she was insisting, look for me, look for me, look for me. Just like the first time she kept telling me she was around and then to look for her. It took me four months to find her, but I found her eventually. Um, but anyways, find me, find me, find me. Um, she gave me some uh, cues and clues. I started looking for her, and I, I finally found the breeder that she was pointing at. I looked at her page, and she said, I'm not with her yet, because the, she has a puppy, no, a female that's about to give birth, and they actually were born five days ago. Those puppies, two sets of puppies, were born five days ago. And um, she said, no, I'm not with her yet. So I thought, oh, that's strange. But I wrote to the breeder, and I, I, a long email telling her what, who we are, what we have, and what we want, and everything else. And 
the she breeds uh, Maki poos. Yeah, Markies, um, Markies, oh, Yorkies, Markies, 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 like Yorkshire Terrier stuff. Yorkshire. Yeah. No, 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 no. So basically, <laughs> she does Yorkies and multi multi dogs and poodles. And I was looking at all of them, and I couldn't find the parents. And Fiona came through, and she said, "I'm going to be a mix because I want to be healthy." And she said, "I'm a mul mul murky. 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 Yeah. Which is a mix between a mul Maltese and a Yorkie." And I said, "Okay, well." Let's see, see how that goes because yeah. she sometimes will have those. Um, so I wrote to her and everything, and she wrote back like we we saw her email this morning. She wrote last night, but we saw her this morning, and um, she said um, all my puppies are gone and fully booked for a long time. But I have a friend in Florida who I'm buying a puppy from, and she has other puppies for sale. And I can book one of those for you. She and said she gets four emails a day. Booking puppies, yeah. So I said, oh, that makes sense. Because Fiona said she doesn't have me yet. And none of the parents, I can't hear from none of them. Yeah. So anyway, she sent photographs of all the puppies that this friend of hers has. All the way in Florida, by the way. All the way is, in Florida. You know, a thousand plus, two thousand miles away, yeah. whatever. And I looked at all of them. And one of them just popped. Right. Really, really strongly. Instantly. Instantly. And there was two photographs, and I said, oh my god, she can't be two puppies, right? Yeah. And then I realized it was the actually, same puppy. It was the same puppy. <laughs> and um, so I sent the lady an email with the photograph of the puppy that we think is Fiona. My dog Fiona. And um, she, and then we called, I said, we're going to call you. So we, we, after a couple of hours of dealing with other stuff, we called her. And she said, yeah, that one's still available. It's very tiny. Um, so... I haven't got it yet. I, I haven't got her yet. She doesn't arrive Don't until come. the 7th of March. Which is right close to your birthday. Yeah, my birthday's on the 4th of March. March 4th. March so you can 4th. send me presents on March 4th. <laughs> and, um, yeah, she... So we sent her the deposit, and she's going to contact the this lady. The airport. Believe it or not, yeah. they bring the puppies from... Florida, which she said, I know it sounds sketchy, but it's actually not sketchy because she's been buying all of her puppies from this lady, this not lady in Florida. Florida. Yeah, but it's where she gets her puppies, where she gets her dogs to have breed, and breed dogs, and her own puppies and things like that. So she's familiar with her. And then they have um, couriers who are the family members of airport workers who bring the puppies personally, and it doesn't cost them too much because they're family members. Well, a pretty interesting, cool way for Fiona to travel from where she got born in Florida, which we couldn't have it. I mean, finding the breeder in Florida? Impossible. Frick, that's impossible. You Google it. How many breeders are there? Like 700? Yeah. So uh, yeah. this was a way for Fiona to make it here. <laughs> which is very similar to the similar. previous journey because she had to travel a long ways to find me last time too. And the, the, she, she was from a rescue place, and uh, her foster dad lived actually two hours away. And he drove two hours to the location where I lived, where they had a show, and that's where I met her. I knew she was there. Anyways, we think this is her, and I said, okay, we'll go for it, and if she turns out not to be Fiona, then she, we won't get her. It's like something will happen that will stop us getting her. And if we get her, it's Obviously, she got through, and we got all the right information. And it's all yeses, yeses, and all, all so far, all yeses. Yeah. All yeses, and all quick. Yeah, very quick. So that's the story of the puppies. If you've never heard of them, they're hypoallergenic, and they're not purebred, so they're, they're called designer dogs. They're to make a mix of two different uh, types of dog, especially created for certain qualities. They're more hypoallergenic, and also. They, their personalities are super sweet. So, cuddle bugs. <laughs> yeah. Which reminds me of a story about Charlie, because Charlie wanted to come too. I know it seems like all the animals want to come back because they do. They do, yeah. But Charlie's an interesting story because he was your dog for ages and he really wanted to come back. Oh, yes. And what happened with him? Yeah. Because. That was really fascinating. Yeah, yeah. so. 
Charlie was my dog when my older children were, t were small, right? So they were like really small children and we got Charlie. Charlie was a Springer Spaniel and we lived in Ireland at the time. And um, we, I wanted a dog because our dog, um, we lost our dog so I, I really needed a dog so we went to get a, one that was really friendly with children, loved children and um, the Springer Spaniels from Ireland are really really adorable and very good with children. So, and we are very high energy families and these are very high energy dogs. Perfect match. Um, we got him and he was our dog for a long, long time. Um, and then anyways, he passed of old age and um, that was many years ago now, like a lot of years, a couple of decades ago now. And about four years ago, three years ago, three years ago, yeah, about three years ago, he appears in my awareness field saying, hey, I want to come back and I want to be back in the family. Probably because he's been watching all the running around we've been doing <laughs> And he said, I said, well, listen, Charlie, we already have two dogs. I don't really want the third. Why don't you ask Daniela, my daughter? We've got it. Remember, we were living on uh, Larry at the time. Yes, when so we already had two dogs and two cats. And Charlie was... wants to come, so that's three dogs and two cats. Yeah. On a little boat. Yeah, that's impossible. That's a lot of work. Yeah. So, anyways, I didn't say anything to Daniela. Like, nothing. Zero. The next day, in one of our conversations, she says, Hey, Mom, you'll never guess who came to me last night. And I said, Who? Charlie, she said, Charlie came and he said he wants to come back to the family. But I told him, no, 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 I don't want the dog right now. But why don't you go and ask mom? <laughs> oh my gosh. So he's like, oh my gosh, that poor Charlie. So he got in touch with me again. And I said, listen, again, the same conversation. Listen, Charlie, uh, I'm allergic to dogs. So you need to be hypoallergenic this time. Because it's all very well, you know cleaning you and everything, but it's way easier for me if you're hypoallergenic. So he says, okay, but I want to be a medium-sized dog. And I said, okay. So we Googled that, we researched, and we found the Portuguese water dogs. Yep. And we got a hit on those. He says, okay, let's find you a breeder where you can come in with. We found one, and he says, okay, I'm gonna, I, he, he told me a few months later, okay, I've got it. I've got a body with this breeder. Uh, book me and uh, we're all set. So I said, perfect, all right. And then I waited a few weeks and um, and as I was going to call the breeder back, Charlie comes into my awareness and says, wait, wait, wait. Wait. Yeah, he said yeah. that. He says, wait, wait, don't, don't call him yet. And I says, why was wrong? And I said, well, he said, he's already booked me for another family that has children. And I really actually want children to play with. Because I love children. And we don't do you, have kids. And we don't, you don't have kids. So do you mind if I go with this family with kids for this lifetime? And I promise you my next lifetime to come back to the family. And I said, of course you can. Of course you can. And I was like, phew. That was a close one. I nearly got another dog. <laughs> On a boat. <laughs> and anyway, so he went to this family with, uh, with children. Very happy. I, I tap into him sometimes. He lives in Canada, yeah. and he's very happy. He's got children in his family, and um, having a beautiful, fantastic, awesome life. Really, really good. But while I was scanning for breeders, this other dog came up, a black one, and I was like, he kept appearing in my awareness, and also like I could actually see him sometimes black and it has a tiny little patch of white on him. Tiny Almost little you can't patch. even see it. Yeah, you can't even see him on his chest. And I was looking at him and he was kept saying, can I come and live with you? Can I come and live with you? And I said, no, no, no. I'm sorry, I confused you. I'm not actually looking for a dog. I was just, you know, that was my dog Charlie that was looking for a body and I just happened to visit your breeder to look for him. But he's going somewhere else now. He says, please, please, please. And we kept saying no. And then he kept doing it over and over again and he says oh my gosh so Larry and I had a conversation and says okay well if we find them we find them if we don't we don't same story right easy, easy. so 
I said, okay, how do I find you? Well, it's one of the bridges that you looked at. Um, but um, I said, okay, give me some more. He said, okay, so I'm half the size of all my litter mates. And I'm smaller than everyone. And I says, all right. So he says, all black with a bit of white. And he said, what, what, what is your name? I said, and he said, Lover. My yeah. name is Lover. Yeah, I, I says, that. okay, all right. Well, that's a very strange name, but Obviously, okay. he's a boy. Obviously, he's a boy. And I said, okay, I'll look for you. So I looked all over Washington. Then I traveled to, to California for some, to visit my kids. And um, I looked all over there and I kept getting no, 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 no. Everybody was a no. I says, well, I'm driving up to Washington. So I look for breeders on the way. So I googled water Portuguese Portuguese water dog breeder near I-5 North. Yep, I remember that. And I got a hit. And as soon as I picked up the phone to call this lady, I got a yes. And I thought, oh my By the way, to gosh. clear up any confusion, in case there's any, she hadn't found the breeder herself. Rome had found the breeder. Yes. So... We had to find where he went to. Yes. So, um... Dogs are not great with geography. <laughs> So anyways, I got a yes immediately, and I called her, and her website said, you know, I'm booked two years in advance, blah, 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 blah. Uh-huh, yeah. But I said, well, the puppy's already there, so... Yeah, said she weird. had a female, right? Well, I called her, and she said, oh, yeah, normally I don't have any puppies, but the last batch, I got like 12 or 14 puppies. It's incredible. My list is clear, and I have two puppies left, two females. And I said, well... It's not a female, but I'll come and see it. Uh, no, no, she didn't actually say male or female, actually, on the phone. So anyways, I said, okay, so we've got two puppies. Great, I'll come and visit. That was so, funny. Yeah, so I drove so up the, I-5 the, yes. the next day. Um, I stopped by her house, and she comes out with the two puppies, and they're both girls. And I'm like, wait, no. Um, didn't I say the puppy I'm looking for is actually a boy? And she said, oh, but this one is perfect for you. And I looked at this girl and she, she was, was perfect. perfect. She was the perfect dog for me. A little princess, yes. highly intelligent, full of beans. She full was beans. perfect. She was perfect. And I said, I know this is a dog that I could really be happy with. I said, but she's not my dog. And I, I said, tell you what. I said, I'm going to tell you a story. And it's really strange, but I hope you bear with me. So I sat down with her and I told her this whole story about Charlie, about the boy, and um, and when I started describing him, suddenly she burst into tears, right? And she said, wait here, and she left. And I was waiting for about 10 minutes for her to come back, you know, I was playing with the puppies, and then she comes back crying with a little boy, tiny, tiny, half the size of the girls, with a tiny little white spot on his chest, and she looks at me and she says, this is Romeo. <laughs> I was going to keep him. And yesterday, he, she said, my husband said, we can't keep more dogs. We have too many dogs. And I said, well, she said, I'm going to keep him unless God shows me a very good sign that this dog belongs to someone else. And I was like, what? <laughs> And he was the most adorable little thing. And he's here in the truck with us right now, sleeping in the back uh, seat. And um, so, yeah, that was Romeo's story and Charlie's story. And now, maybe Fiona's story. Yeah, and maybe Fiona's story, too. Which is similar to Brad's story. Yeah. And Theodora's story. Yeah. So, in a sense, this is a bit of a taste of what an expanded reality feels like. Yeah, an expanded awareness. You could hear, listen, tap in, you know. Connect. Connect. Hear. Yeah, and I can assure you, if your pet has passed away, or you had pets that you're very fond of and they're gone, they're still with you. They hang out. And even if they had other lives somewhere else, if you want them back, they will come back for sure. You just have to read the signs. Yep. <laughs> and here we are at the res! Yay! We made it! We still didn't get our initial conversation done. That was it. We got dogs and puppies in the way of doing our work. <laughs> yeah. So okay. if you have any ideas of how we can get to our work, <laughs> instead give us a of message. All, of the, all the other things that are well, know, also very interesting, right? I guess that's life of a fairy sometimes. Yeah. And we are at the rest. See you next time. Bye.